The Minecraft movie teaser trailer just came out recently and it's been receiving some mixed reviews. From what's been shown so far, it doesn't look that promising. But let's be completely real here, there was never going to be a reality where they made the perfect Minecraft movie. Would it have worked better in animation? Well, probably, but we can give it the benefit of the doubt before it comes out and I'm willing to do that so I can look at it from a fresh perspective. But despite all of this, after watching the trailer, something still felt off and after trying to pinpoint what it was i kept coming back to steve so much so that i've decided to dig deep into minecraft's past to figure out what it was and that's what leads us to today because today i'm going to try and convince you that this movie is actually a continuation from a book that was written seven years ago but before we do that, please do subscribe, it's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Subscribing is the best way to support my channel as it allows me to make more videos and you to get notified whenever I post. So if you could just please check to see that you are subscribed, that would be great. Thank you and back to the video. In the lead up to the Minecraft movie being announced, we had a few teasers of who was going to be in it and one of them was Jason Momoa. And if you looked on the internet, you'll find a lot of people were under the impression that Jason Momoa was going to be playing Steve, which surface level makes a a lot of sense. When we look at Steve, he has a tan complexion, a short beard with medium length hair. I'm not a casting agent, but I think Jason Momoa would fit the bill. Just slap on purple coloured contacts, dark blue jeans and a light blue shirt and boom, you've got Steve. Which is why many people were confused when they heard the role was going to Jack Black. He's an incredible actor, but it's kind of hard to see the vision of what they were going for. But there might be a reason for that. You see, this wasn't the only Minecraft project that Jack Black has been involved with. Back in 2017, the start of a series of books had been released, official Minecraft novels written with various authors all maintaining similar storylines. One that springs to mind quite often and is the first of the series is Minecraft The Island, written by Max Brooks who is also the author of World War Z. In fact, the first I heard about this book was on a Tumblr thread that mentioned how crazy it was he wrote it. The whole premise of the book was that it was about a man who washes up on an island. He's a castaway, waking up in a world where everything is made of blocks and monsters who hunt him in the night. And he needs to find a way to survive. The point is, this story isn't one of a mystical fantasy land like all other Minecraft stories tend to be. It's a horror, where a man's alone in a world he doesn't recognise and is probably just about coming to terms with the facts that the physics make no sense! WHY DO THE TREES FLOAT?! It's a really dark take on the Minecraft world itself, but you see that in the trailer they actually experiment with a few of these ideas. But wait, there's more. Because if you were to download this story on something like Audible, you'll find that there's an option to have it narrated by none other than Jack Black. And looking at it from this perspective, it's kind of easy to see how these stories can intertwine. This isn't Steve, this is older Steve. This is a Steve after living in a blocky world for so long that he's come to terms with it. This is a Steve that had to survive night after night of mysterious creatures and monsters ever since being stranded as a castaway. Even watching the trailer, we can already kind of tell that Steve isn't meant to be there considering he's not made out of blocks. He doesn't have his purple eyes and he's quite clearly fitting in more with the humans than the rest of the blocky world. I think what also put me off was the way that Steve greets them. His response to seeing them is obviously- I am Steve. But would that be your reaction? So far from what we've seen, Steve is the outlier in his world. He is the circle in a world of squares. If he didn't know that he's not from that world, wouldn't his reaction be, why are there people here that look like me? Or if he does know that he shouldn't be there, then wouldn't this question be, how did you get here? But instead of that, he chooses to show off and try impress them. This introduction sets him up to be a character that we do see in other games, and it makes sense for those other games, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of like an NPC tutorial type character. For example, when the group in Jumanji run into an NPC, they had to talk them through the game, but Minecraft doesn't really have that unless you count achievements. Steve isn't an NPC, he's a player. He's THE player which is why it makes more sense that he would have come from our world. But if that's the case, wouldn't he be more curious on how to get back? 
Oh, let's look at it this way. Steve's backstory could very well be similar to the events of the island, a world in which he was stranded on and had to defend himself, but now he's settled down. He's built a home with the villagers. You can see that he actually runs a shop there himself. As far as he's concerned, he's just another villager to build and create whatever he wants because that's the point of Minecraft. The possibilities are endless. And this is exactly where the monologue comes from in the trailer and why Steve chooses to show off because despite not coming from this world, he has made it his own. Maybe he does know how to get back, but he doesn't care because this is his home and he has settled down. And looking at it, he does seem to have quite a nice thing going in this world. That is, until he eventually has to fight for his home when the film reaches its climax, but you, you get the point. The point is, is that this movie is going to be made up of different ideas from what Minecraft has created. Hell, it's quite evident that Minecraft is using ideas from Minecraft Legend in order to rationalise why the piglins are in the overworld in the first place and fighting back, why they are able to build a lot of the stuff we don't see in the main game. In fact, that's probably why this doesn't feel that Minecrafty. Because despite the choice in texture, it's not just coming from one source material. The Minecraft movie is going to make use out of every Minecraft project they've done, grabbing certain aspects that work and discarding others that don't. Will this be a good choice? That entirely depends on the execution of the project. But until it comes out, what do you guys think of this theory? Is it plausible? And if so, do you think they're going to be using some other aspects from different Minecraft media? Tell me what you guys think in the comments. And thank you guys so much for watching. If this is the first video you've seen by me, please do check out my other theories. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I want to thank my members. You guys are incredible. All the support you give me, I truly cannot thank you enough for it. Thank you. And I'll see you guys in the next video.